Number four. The fourth commandment is that you have to keep the Sabbath day as a sacred day. Yeah, just like on the Sunday or something, we go meditate together. Yeah, yeah? Yes. a group meditation. At that day, you forsake everything. You leave all the physical activities and any labor work behind in order to come and attend the group meditation together. On that day, you don't do anything more. That's uh, what uh, God uh, commands. He say you work six days, and during these six days, you do everything that you need to do, you know, in your physical environment and activities. But on the seventh day, they call it Sabbath in uh, in the Bible, huh? Mm. On the seventh day, that is the day that you worship God, and on that day. You and anyone who stays with you should not do any uh, uh, labor work or physical work because in six days God created heaven and earth and oceans and all the things that are existing on earth and in the ocean, etc., or in heaven, like stars and stuff, yeah, moon, sun. Mm. And then on the seventh day, God blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Yeah, the seventh day is a holy day. Maybe that's why we call uh, the end of the week Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, or in Chinese and Vietnamese, I don't know about other countries, but in Chinese Vietnamese we call that the day of God. Yeah. Chin Chi Tian. Tian means means sky, also means God. Yeah, in Vietnam we call it also as the day of the Lord. Okay, hay Chủ Nhật. Okay, Chủ Nhật hay Chúa Nhật is the same, meaning the day of the Lord, of our Master, of the Lord. Hmm? Maybe that's why. So that day, Chin Chi Tian means Sunday, is a holy day, is a blessed day. It's a sacred day. So in that day, God told his uh, worshippers at that time not to do any physical work, but to worship God only. Yeah? Sunday, mostly, we go for meditation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, now we still do that. Well, we do it every day. Normally, God doesn't mean you only do it that day, meaning that to gather together that day to do it. Like a group meditation that we do every Sunday, remember? Yeah. 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 Yes, and, and now we do it more. And every day we do our homework at home. We meditate individually or with family members or with a small group of fellow disciples. But Sunday we group together in the ashram. Remember that? Yes? yes. Mm. So that's what God even say that before nowadays. But that's normal. It just becomes normal like that. Because in this world, Sunday, mostly people don't work anyway. Yeah, so they get together and worship God, or they go to the church still. You see, tradition still, still that you go to the church on Sunday. Yeah. Yes, Sun yes. means heaven also. Yeah, that's why they say Sunday. <laughs> because the sun uh, symbolizes God. Uh, in, in Vietnam or in other countries, they call it heaven, uh, the sky. You see what I'm saying? The sky also means heaven. And the sun is the brightest in the sky. So it symbolizes heaven, yes. and it's for heaven that day, for God that day, in the Western terminology. In our terminology, the Asians, they call it the day of the Lord, hmm? day of God. All right, so now, a uh, number five, you have to respect uh, your father and your mother so that your days will be also extended on earth. And because God uh, will bless you that way. In China or in Vietnam, we say, if you respect the elderly, you will live a longer life. <laughs> you will live long life. Yeah, this is similar to what God said in here. Huh? If you respect your parents and take care of them, then you will... Uh, be blessed to have a longer life on earth. 
Number six. You will not kill. Number seven. You will not have sexual misconduct. Uh, it is saying here like you don't commit adultery. Okay? Like if you're married, you don't have another physical relationship with somebody else outside of your marriage. Number eight. You will not steal. But Jesus said, whoever steals for bread is not guilty, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends also. You don't steal on purpose to take away other people's property if you don't need it. But whoever steals bread because of hunger is not guilty. I agree with what Jesus said. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we are in desperate situation, if we cannot ask, then we just take a piece of bread and thank God for that. Then it's different from stealing. Understand me, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, you will not steal things that don't belong to you. Number nine, you will not be a false witness in the accusation of somebody else near you or next to you. Like you don't go to the court and, you know, wrongly accuse somebody just for your own benefit or anything else that you know for sure that person didn't do what you say he did. That even God doesn't allow. But nowadays, politicians, they do anything. You saw that yourself. <laughs> if you're American, you know already, right? Yes. Mm. Number 10. You will not envy uh, the property of your neighbors, yeah? Or the wife of someone that's near you or you know. Or any of the servants of that person that you know or any of the, the animals of that person, the person that you know, or any anything at all of the other persons, of your neighbor or somebody that you know, that you envy, you jealous of, and you want them for yourself. should not do that. Actually, this also should be in the stealing, right? Yeah, same, but maybe not, maybe not. Stealing is more physical, like you go and take something. Mm. But this is the, even not envy, mm, not wanting the things that belong to others. Yeah, <laughs> actually, stealing food is a small step. It's not uh, much when he's poor and hungry, or steals for his family or or somebody in need. It's not too bad. You know, I don't condemn that. If they need it, it's different. Okay, huh? Yeah. yeah but okay. some people steal big, big, big. You know. They steal people's land, people's country, people's uh, properties, people's reputations, people's, how you say, success. All this is worse than small things. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. And that including those politicians who did everything possible, but not properly, not appropriately, in order to harm the opponent or to claim on top of the opponent in order to get the power in the wrong way, not honestly. You know it already, yeah? Yes. Uh, in different countries we have that. So now you have enough. You know already the Ten Commandments. You all right? <laughs>
if you continue meditation and keep the precept as well. But if you just keep the precept like this, yeah, and be an ordinary person, you will be reborn again. Maybe as a good person, in a good position, but reborn again. Right. And once you reborn again, other karma from other lives may come back to you. That won't let you keep the ten precepts anymore. You will not be in a position to keep yourself upright and virtuous. You understand now? Yes, yes, Because this world, according to <laughs> the sage of China, they say this world is a big dying tub, meaning everybody, you know, affect each other and pollute each other and die in each other similar color, blackness. Okay, so very easy to fall again. Because you have different karma to be reincarnated in different lifetimes as a different person or different being. This lifetime maybe is your period of good karma. Yes. 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 So if you keep a good life like this, maybe next life you can have the same life again. Mm? Yes. Yeah, but who knows? If your other bad karma will not come, come to you in the next life, Next life, you never know if you will be born in such a good uh, situation and associate with good people or uh, be with good friends who can remind you of a virtuous and moral upright uh, lifestyle again. Okay? Yes. Even the Buddha, in some former lives, he had done something wrong because of the different background, because the different situation, different associations. This is too cruel. I don't want to talk about it. Okay? Yes. yes. yes But he had to be blind one time. Somebody had to pluck his eyes. Oh. Yes, it was very gruesome. This life is like that. So you never know if you are lucky to be reborn in a good circumstance again. Yes. There was a story about one guy who listened to the saying, just a few sentences, uh, listened to him, and then he died after that. And before he died, the saying, the one that uh, was preaching in, the, in one lecture that he attended, because a friend uh, took him, you know, whatever happened, that he listened to the saint's lecture one time. And then the saint told him, you're going to die soon. When you die, you will meet the church, yeah? And the church will ask you whether or not you want to, to receive the benefit, the merit of listening to my lecture first, or you want to pay the karma first. So you should say to the church, The one that you judge him, yeah? Yes. In the afterlife, yes. you should say to him that you want the benefit of listening to the saints' lecture first. You understand? Yes. yes. So that's what he said. And then he can uh, go to meet that saint again in the other level of consciousness. You know, the saints don't always have just a physical body, yeah? Yes. The master have different body and lecture in different heavens. So because of that, he can go and listen to the master again on the other level, yeah? yeah. From then he has more merit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he goes up. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have to go down to receive the karma. Okay? Yes. You only get wet if you stay outside in the rain. <laughs>